Hello, my name is Malcolm Richardson. I'm the director of the UK's National Health Service Mycology Reference Centre and I'm going to talk about cryptococcus, aspects of the mycology of the organism and virulence. So a number of intended learning outcomes from this uh, short presentation. Uh, I want you to be aware of the common species and the habitats, the ecological niches of cryptococcus, to understand the structure of this uh, yeast cryptococcus, to be aware of the different serotypes of the organism, and to be aware of the various virulence factors of cryptococcus, which really do impact on the severity of the disease. So this is a common yeast, it's an encapsulated yeast, it's covered by a, a polysaccharide capsule and belongs to the fungal division, the Basidiomycota. At least 70 species of the organism have been described and there are probably many more. However, in terms of um, critical disease, Cryptococcus neoformans and Cryptococcus gattii, they're the two main species that are implicated in nearly all cases of human cryptococcosis and the disease which occurs in various animals as well. There are distinct varieties of Cryptococcus neoformans. First of all, there's Cryptococcus neoformans variety neoformans, and then secondly, there's Cryptococcus neoformans variety rubii. And the other species are of less clinical significance, and these include Cryptococcus laurentii, uh, Cryptococcus adeniensis and Cryptococcus albulus and many, many more. We really don't know whether or not these are uh, important in terms of human infection. <clears throat> so first of all, let's have a look at the organism itself. It's a round or nearly round oval sort of structure and um, similar to other yeasts, it's between four and six millimeters in diameter. As I've said previously, it's surrounded by a polysaccharide capsule which is a very important virulence determinant of this organism, as we will see in a minute, but also is extremely useful in diagnosis, which we will touch upon later. So the capsule can vary in thickness, 20 to 30 millimetres typically, though this varies uh, between the organism grown in culture and what we see in tissue. But also, um, over the last few years, people have recognised much larger cells called titan cells, we don't really know what the biological function of these is, but they have been well described and characterized. <clears throat> the organism is melanized. It has melanin in its cell wall, which again confers resistance to host effector cells like neutrophils and macrophages. The use of the India ink, and this is something I will talk about in a minute, uh, shows the presence of this, of this capsule. Why? Because the India ink particles cannot penetrate into the, into the capsule. They're excluded by this capsule. So in this uh, picture here, we can see here on the bottom right-hand side, the capsule is shown as a halo surrounding the yeast cell. And in histopathological sections, we can clearly see uh, the organism when it's stained, when those sections are stained with PAS, mucicarmine, and other stains. So where does the organism live? Well, we know a lot about uh, where to find this organism. It's um, Cryptococcus neoformans. It's found in soil that's contaminated with pigeon or other bird droppings, for example, starlings and other birds that roost. But interestingly enough, not in fresh, wet droppings. So the significance of that we're not really too sure about, but it's an interesting observation. And the precise link between Cryptococcus neoformans and birds to date remains unclear. Are birds part of the, the transmission pathway for Cryptococcus, or is it purely exposed to the dry droppings? We're not too sure about this. And interestingly enough, the birds themselves do not get infected. On the other hand, Cryptococcus gattii has a completely different environmental niche. It's isolated from decaying wood in the red gum tree, group of eucalyptus trees, uh, seed, oak, and other native trees. In particular, we're beginning to recognize now, especially where we've had major outbreaks of the disease in the northwest Pacific coast of the Americas, uh, but also in other forested areas, various fir trees like the Douglas fir have been implicated as being the habitat for Cryptococcus gattii. And interestingly enough, gattii has not been isolated from bird droppings. So these appear to be very different organisms in some respects. 
So for a long time now we've recognised serotypes of cryptococcus neoformans and of course as time has gone on these have been replaced by genotypes but I'll just uh, uh, briefly mention some of the serotypes that have been recognised uh, for cryptococcus species which have been very useful in identification. So first of all then cryptococcus neoformans the variety uh, Grubii is denoted with the um, serotype A. It's found around the world and birds in particular, pigeons are implicated in the environment. But also, um, we know a lot about which particular patient groups are infected with this particular serotype. So we're talking about HIV-positive patients, immunocompromised patients, very rarely immunocompetent. On the other hand, Cryptococcus gatii, we recognize two serotypes here, B and C. This organism is found in the tropics and subtropics primarily, though increasingly we're recognizing now other geographical areas where we can find this organism. And for a long time it was thought it was just the eucalyptus trees that were the habitat for this organism. But as I've just said, we're now seeing this in more sort of temperate climates and fir trees seem to be uh, an alternative habitat for this organism. But the distinction here is that it's immunocompetent patients that seem to be infected with this organism. Then we come on to neoformans, variety neoformans, and here we have a distinct serotype, serotype D. This is what we find in European countries, again associated with birds, particularly pigeons, and here we're talking again about immunocompromised patients and very rarely in immunocompetent. And then finally, uh, the last um, <coughs> variety, Grubii, um, Cryptococcus neoformans grubii. Here we recognize serotype A and D. We don't really know where this is found. This, I think, reflects the little work that's been done on this particular variety. We don't really know much about its environmental association, but we do know that it has been implicated in disease in immunocompromised patients, but it's a very rare infection. So the virulence factors that uh, enable this organism to be a major pathogen um, <clears throat> are the capsule, as I've said, the fact that uh, melanin as a pigment is in the cell wall. This makes the cell wall very robust. This is a thermotolerant organism. It grows well at 37 degrees and also can undergo a phenomenon called phenotypic switching. Other things we know about the virulence, the so-called pathogenic determinants of this organism, it can secrete phospholipase B, it can produce urease, and a, a variety of enzymes associated with protecting the organism against oxidative stresses which may be present both in tissue and in host effector cells. <clears throat> a little more detail about um, the, uh, the capsule. We can see here in the, in the, in the picture, uh, the, the, here we have a wide capsule shown again with the India ink uh, stain. And here we can see some, some budding yeast. So this, this capsule confers a, a number of, of um, attributes, virulence attributes, to the organism. It's antiphagocytic. This is a slippery structure. It's very difficult for phagocytes and macrophages to actually grapple with this type of structure. It uh, does not seem to evoke an, an antibody response. It inhibits leukocyte migration. Um, it's, it's in, implicated in degranulation of cytokine secretion, sorry, deregulation of cytokine secretion, and it interferes with antigen presentation. And also, um, we know a bit about the L selection and tumor necrosis factor loss. <coughs> so, the melanin that's present in the organism, and this can be shown with various specific stains, um, the key roles include it being an antioxidant. It really does strengthen the cell wall. It makes it a very robust, tough structure. Um, it certainly does reduce susceptibility to the antifungal agents we have available for treating this disease. <clears throat> and it um, seems to protect the organism from extreme temperatures. As I've said already, this <coughs> phenomenon of phenotypic switching, which we have, we have seen increasingly in Candida, Candida albicans, also seems to be uh, something that cryptococcus can do. It appears to happen during chronic infection. It's more commonly seen with serotypes A and D and is associated with differential gene expression and capsular changes. <clears throat> so in summary then, 
Cryptococcus species, they're ubiquitous in the environment globally, and it's an encapsulated yeast. There are two main species, Cryptococcus neoformans and Cryptococcus gatii. These are the two main species that are implicated in clinical disease. It has a number of virulence factors, which I've outlined for you, and Cryptococcus neoformans variety grubii, this is serotype A, is the most common cause of disseminated disease in HIV patients, AIDS patients. Thank you very much. <coughs>